Hey comic book fans, welcome back to another episode of Comic Book Geezers. I am Wild Bill, your host, and right over here we have... P. Pardo here, what's going on everybody? Hope you're doing well here. Uh, we've got another uh, look at a Marvel slash Curtis black and white magazine. Uh, we're kind of on a little horror kick kick because... Halloween month. It is October, right? So, you know, gotta got to dish the horror stuff out. And we probably showed off this particular cover before but i don't think we've ever opened it up and gone inside the cover so this is issue number one from 1975 the legion of monsters look at that so right off the bat who do we see on the cover we see dracula and the frankenstein monster right and then it says featuring a world premiere issue featuring the origin of the manphibian yeah my guess is that's a creature of the Black Lagoon, sort There's of. It's a manphibian, so right. we'll leave it at that. Kind of like, on one hand, you have the Invisible Man, then you have another guy that's invisible, but you can't call him the Invisible Man, so you call him Transparent Man. Transparent Man, man right? So, yeah. apparently, Marvel got the rights to use Dracula and, and Frankenstein, but not Creature from the Black Lagoon, so we're just going to call him Manphibian. <laughs> also, in this issue, what do we got here? Bram Stoker's Dracula in comics form. So, all right. uh, as with all of these, glorious artwork will ensue. Pablo look, Marcos, Look at right? Pablo Marcos uh, inside the cover. Uh, shot there very cool and uh, table of contents we got support your local monster which is the editorial you got the Frankenstein monster the monster in the mask this is a brand new at the time uh, Frankenstein monster story, story because at the time he also had his own color comic uh, the Manphibian Vengeance Crude he came from beyond the stars wait a second Creature from the Black Moon that didn't come from Beyond the Stars. Well, right, did so in this book. did in this book, I guess. Well, we're going to find out. We're going to find out. Uh, the Legion Report, which is the latest news from the world of monster cinema. The Flies, they called him Chuckles. Monster Madness, Bram Stoker's Dracula, Death Be Pratt, and Monster Gallery. And we've got uh, Editor-in-Chief Archie Goodwin, Tony Isabella as the editor, Roy Thomas, contributing editor, Len Wein, Marv Wolfman, all sorts of other people. Um, and we got Pablo Marcus, Stu Schwartzberg, Don Thompson, Neil Adams did the cover. So that's a Neil Adams cover right there. Sure, we should have picked up on that. I totally did not. Very cool. We just did. Yeah, we did now, right? So here we got uh, support your local monster. So here's a little editorial news and information uh, on the, the you know the world of monster cinema. Here we get the Frankenstein storyline, the little prologue to kick it off. Doug Mensch did the story. Val Mayerick, Dan Atkins, and Pablo Marcus did the artwork and. Val Merrick was doing quite a few of those issues uh, in the color comic after Mike Plug. So here we got the yeah, monster and the mask. Sign. Yeah. So here we got, uh, you know, and I always thought Val Merrick's Frankenstein looked a little on the goofy side, as you can tell down there at the corner. That's Frankenstein? <laughs> yeah. I thought that was a hippie from uh, Woodstock. He's a little goofy, right? Yeah. <laughs> he's, not, he's not quite as menacing as, as Mike Plug. Like I mean, he, he looks kind of doofus, doesn't he? This, yeah. yeah. Uh, there, he's looking a more, little sophisticated drinker with the pinky in the air. Yeah. Over here. Yeah. I guess show him that. Yeah. <laughs> Frankenstein. Frankenstein, Frankenstein snob. Where is it? Over there. Yeah. Frankenstein snob right there. Doing a shot. Get but it's good artwork. It is good. No, it's good. It's just he just he looks a little goofy. But other than that, so he's at a he's at a costume party here, it's, you know, like a Halloween party. So here, kind of cool to see a um, a Frankenstein story outside of the main uh, series in the color comic, which only ran eighteen, 18 issues, issues. Yeah, which was. In reality, 36 months, three years, because it was bi-monthly. This is hilarious how they, they all come, stumble by one start coming up to uh, Frankenstein and getting in his face, and he just, like, bashes them out of the way. Bill's got an important phone call, so I'll continue taking you uh, taking you through here. So here, they, they all start ganging up on him, and he's just, like, you know, just real easily knocking them all out of the way. You know, again, he always, uh, the whole thing about, you know, the Frankenstein monster, the Hulk, you know, they're always living lives in isolation. So here at the end, he walks off all by himself. He was in this party with all these people, but yet, uh, you know, in the end, they're always always wanting to gang up on him because he's big and ugly. And so that's that. This is pretty cool. If you subscribe to the Legion of Monsters, I'll eat this editor. And there you have a, uh, a still photo from an old 50s 
sci-fi creature feature, which I think was Attack of the Giant Crabs or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. That's what it kind of looks like. And then you got uh, the uh, the Manphibian, right? So Vengeance Crude. So basically, um, so here we've got from crew. He comes from space, but born in a vat of crude oil comes the Manphibian. So again, not born and living in the Florida Everglades, but uh, born from oil. That's why it's okay. called Vengeance Crude. That was my mom on the phone. I had to take that call. Sorry, gang. Everything but, okay? Yeah. She, <laughs> she was touching base with me. So, so, uh, so, yeah. So, basically, this creature arrives from another world, wreaks havoc on Earth, but then there were people from the other planet looking for him. So, it kind of looks like the creature from the Black Lagoon, but not really. Um, a little altered. So then they, they, they're trying to bring him back, I guess. He's not interested. So then all, all these creatures, all these Manphibians, all fighting each other here. Really pretty good artwork here. I don't know if we talked about who, who drew this particular one. Let's go back a couple pages. Uh, plot, Marv Wolfman, script, Tony Isabella, art, Dave Cockrum, and Sam Granger. Okay. So then, you know, of course, uh, here's the ship. All right, got a big explosion. Blah, blah, blah. So this is more like an alien creature thing as opposed to kind of what we thought on the cover, which was more like a knockoff of Creature from the Black Lagoon, which it really is not, although it looks like one of them survives and stays here. So maybe for a future issue. The martial art master. Oh, yes. He makes it even into magazines from yep. the comics. Dimmock, the Death Touch. See that? I, I forgot what his name was in the comics. It's the different. Wild's Deadly Fighting. No, I had, yours. he had a different name. Yeah, I don't know. In the comics. I don't know. The Black Dragon Fighting Society brings you the forbidden secrets of Dimmock. That's got to be a black dragon. Yeah. See, here we got uh, Legion Report with a shot of a giant shark. 1975. Oh, Jaws. Jaws came out in 1975. Yes, riding on the Jaws. That's right. There's the shark. Very cool. So it's interesting. So here they talk about all the new horror and monster films that came out that, that year. year. That's pretty, that must be a pretty cool read. I mean, granted, you know, if you're a big horror fan, you probably know of all this stuff anyway. Uh, here we got Here's the Land of Time. Here's some Oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> here we go. The reincarnation of Peter Pratt, Young Frankenstein, the Land there. of Time for God. This is, these, these Marty are, Feldman. This one right here. Yep. That's right up our alley when oh, we yeah. were kids watching movies. Yeah, I love those giant dinosaurs. Look, terrible yeah. looking puppets and stuff. The, the hammer of special effects. Oh, yeah. Gotta love it, though. Jason and the Argonauts. Yep. All right, so here we go. The flies. Oh, look at this dude. Yeah. <laughs> so here we got some kind of story about killer flies. And this uh, guy named Zing Pinhead. Zing Pinhead. Pinhead. Yeah, that's what this guy looks like. He looks like a pinhead. Not much going on here, but I guess he's uh, taking lots of crap from the, the kids, making fun of him. And you know in the end, he's going to get his come up. And so it looks like the fly is going to enlist the flies <laughs> to help him gain revenge on the terrible bully kids. Ah, that makes all the sense in the world now. Huh? Yep. <laughs> the one bully, dead by flies. Look, look, Felix the cat. Oh, there we go, yep. Cool t-shirts. Felix the cat. I used to watch that cartoon when I was a kid. Uh, absolutely. absolutely. It is a bag of tricks. And then we got, how about some Dracula? Um, so Dick, Dick Giordano, no Gene Colan here, but we got some, some Dracula now, Monster Madness. So this, kind of like what we showed in uh, Bill's recent Epic Illustrated number four. So here you got artwork with all, not really so much dialogue, but like, uh, basically, um, like storyboard, storyboard art. art and dial not dialogue boxes, but like narrative boxes where they're just it's like you know a book, but they just Novel take a chunk of yeah, illustrations galore. Yeah, kind of interesting here. This is a little bit different, more art than the words. Yeah, and then from there, okay, now we go into um, the actual comic part of, the, of this this storyline. So here we go. This looks a little more familiar now. Right, for those of you who read uh, Tomb of Dracula or uh, you know any of the black and white vampire things. See, find things. see, this almost looks like this is not far removed from what we would see in the Tomb of Dracula comic. It's kind of Gene Colan ish. Yeah. I think they were kind of, looks like they were going for that same kind of style. Okay. It's like, oh my, 
power of the wolf. We're stuck in the late 1880s, yeah. 1800s, right? Van Helsing. Oh, that's a good, nice splash page. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. And now we get to the, the gallery at the end. Yeah, put that back there. That's a Tomb of Dracula kind of cover. Yeah, big time. Although the Dracula doesn't really look like Gene Colton's Dracula, but it's still pretty cool. Like the skull and the yeah. bottom of the candlestick. Yep, the attention kind of to the detail. Right. coming down the steps. Yeah. The reject. Yeah, the attention to detail on this is really great. So Hermoso Pancho drew that. I don't know who Hermoso Pancho is. Here we got uh, Pete Lihuaco. I don't know what this is supposed to be. It's some kind of werewolf creature. Look how bloody this is. Look at that. Woohoo! Ha! <laughs> pretty intense. Then you got the freaks. Uh, oh, you're forming. Yeah, so it almost looks like Quasimodo, but without the hunchback and with four it's, arms. That's kind of bizarre. It's not really Spider Man. No, it's not really the hunchback. And then, of course, in the next issue of Legion of Monsters, you got Morbius, Satana, and Dracula Hour of the Wolves. Coming up in issue number two, which I believe I have. Yeah. So, uh, anything else of note here? Oh, look at this. Ah. Masters of Terror with Invisible Man. That's not the transparent man. No, that's the Invisible Man, right? It's Claude Atkins' adaptation. And then, uh, yeah, it's basically it. Kung Fu Karate. And, uh, and hey, a... look who's smiling now. Popular comic book ad on oh, the back. Oh, big time. Big time. So they just blow it up and put it on the back of a magazine yeah. instead. So there you have it, everybody. Legion of Monsters, number one from 1975. If you have this, let us know what you think of it. If you don't, go check it out because these, these monster bags are They're hard cool. to find. They are hard to find, but I tracked one down a number anyway, of years ago. Anyway, I'm Wild Bill saying thanks for being here. Please click the like button if you like this video. Also, share it with your friends if they don't know about comic book geezers. And as always, we thank you for your subscriptions and thank you for being here. Thanks for checking us out. And we'll do some more monster mags down the line here as we celebrate October, Halloween month. As always, thanks for being here, and we'll see you soon. That's right. Uh, for Wild Bill, I am Pete Pardo. We'll see you guys in just a couple days with more comic book easers. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye. See you.